Okay, hello and welcome. I'm Jeff Langdale. I'm an engineer from Intel, and um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, a topic that has been coming up a fair bit in the keynotes. So, talking about security, we, uh, the team that I work with, develop a regular expression acceleration library that's des designed to make security faster and scalable. And I think it's this is becoming increasingly relevant in the OpenStack world. So, Hyperscan. Hyperscan is our regular expression library. And I'd like to start off quickly by talking about, well, why do you care? Because you, you know, you, this is not a very open stacky topic on the surface of it, so I want to establish why, you know, what the audience for this talk is and you know, what's interesting about what we've built. So Hyperscan is a software library. It's open source and permissive terms, and what it does is it allows you to match a large number of regular expressions uh, at, at wire speeds. We're used in a whole bunch of the major networking vendors. Some have acknowledged that we use them, and I can sort of call out names. Others I've got to keep to myself. We're also used across a wide variety of open source uh, systems like uh, Snort and Suricata, so that if you're familiar with open source intrusion prevention or open source um, intrusion detection systems, then that's the, so those are the sort of systems where we've been initially adopted. So the target audience for this talk is that either you're building some sort of DPI solution and you want to understand how Hyperscan can make your system faster. Alternately, you're using one of these systems and we've got sort of somewhat of the uh, pharmaceutical ad thing. Ask your, ask your vendor whether I can have you know, our regular expressions right for me. So the, so the idea of using Hyperscan is that we can build a, you can build a better DPI system much more, cheap, much more cheaply. You don't need specialized hardware. You don't need to tie yourself to a particular uh, hardware accelerator or smart NIC. You can just take off the shelf, I think I'm still allowed to say that, high volume x86 servers and use them to run DPI solutions. And I'd, I'm also sort of banging the drum here in this marketplace. I'm not just marketing Hyperscan per se or Intel, but we're also marketing the idea that regular expressions are the way that you want to be detecting these kind of, that they're an important component in detecting these kind of attacks. And because they're robust, they're scalable. So part of, part of what I want to do is that it's not just hyperscan, it's the whole idea of regexes. Really, they're really cool. So what am I doing here? You may have noticed that I'm a, uh, I've got an Australian accent, so I'm, a, I'm an odd duck from the Intel perspective. We used to run a uh, startup called Sensory Networks. It was acquired by Intel in 2013. And so we've been doing regular expressions for a long time. The company has existed since 2003. I joined in 2006. We tried everything. I think there's a quote, Churchill has a quote about Americans that says, Americans can be depended to do the right thing after they've exhausted all the alternatives. Well, we could be depended on to, to do regular expressions well after we tried all the other ideas. So we tried hardware. We tried GPGPU. At one stage, I had the best gaming rig in Sydney and never got to run a single game on it. But I had some beautiful NVIDIA cards in it to do GPGPU programming. We tried that. We tried all sorts of things. In the end, we came around to the conclusion that the right way to do regular expressions was in software. So in 2009, we almost died as a company. And we, so we had our near-death experience. We refocused on software, and we won. We got a bunch of tier one vendors, and we became profitable. And Intel acquired Sensory Networks in October 2013. So we were always, so in the Intel, we were on a bunch of different platforms, but we've always been We've always liked that Intel sort of best on IA concept and software first. Software first means that but before you try a whole bunch of other crazy stuff, you should at least try to write good software. Best on IA says that the workloads, networking workloads, our goal is to always make sure that networking workloads can run best on Intel architecture. And we were already pretty down with that before we were even being paid to say that. So we always liked programming on Intel SIMD. We always liked, the, liked it as a hardware platform. And um, you know, now, now there we are. So I w I'll, try to, I'll try to spare you too much of the uh, sort of hard Intel sell. But what the, the, our overall strategy in the network platforms group at Intel is what we call four, the so four and one strategy. So what we're saying is that, every, that of the four major network workloads, we're talking about moving them from, from, from a um, specialized uh, um, proprietary systems, maybe running on specialized hardware, and we, what we want them to do is move those workloads one at a time onto Intel, Intel architecture. So you have your application processing, your layer seven, your control plane. I am squarely in the, inside that little red box. That's packet, pro we're in the packet processing world, and we are, we are making sure that you can get the best possible packet processing results, both using in terms of delivery of uh, 
running your data plane on DPDK and doing DPI with Hyperscan. And uh, we're also working on sort of baseband processing and signal processing too. But that's for people who are much smarter than I am and know more about floating point math. So we won't talk about that. So I'll talk a bit about regular expression matching. I think I might be preaching to the choir somewhat and that many of you might already be thoroughly aware of what a regex is. And you know, you can, you can sort of check your phones or roll your eyes back in your head while I go through the, this bit. So regular expressions. They're an expressive mechanism to detect something on the wire that's going by. And, the, and I say they're expressive in that they're very, um, they allow you to express a lot more of the, of the logic of what you're trying to look for than just saying, I want to look for the following naughty strings and nothing else. So, so here's a simplified, so one simplified example, we might say that we're looking for some sort of character, something that this is a simplified version, but it's characteristic of a overflow attack. Someone is giving you a username, someone's sending you a username, and they're giving you a whole lot of stuff, and they're not ending the line. So the, the, what, what that, the, the first part of that regex says is that we're going to see the user, username followed by 200 characters that aren't a carriage return. So they're just pumping stuff into a buffer. Maybe I've got a system on the other side of, the, on the other side of your firewall that doesn't know that it should sanitize its input. So you've got, a, um, you've got a buffer over an attack and then the beginning of some sort of binary payload that is going to be planted on your stack and bad things will happen. Of course, you shouldn't have that system running behind your firewall, but this is the, sort of, this is the belt and suspenders approach. We can spot a lot of these attacks coming in. They look, they look weird. So that's, that's one example. Another example here, and I had, to, I had to search far and wide to find one that I didn't find offensive for presenting in public, because a lot of the, a lot of the, spam, a lot of the spam signatures are really a tour through the worst part of the human character. Anyway, so I found online pharmacy, which I think we can say is annoying but not offensive. And there's a lot of different ways that you could, someone wants to deliver the phrase online pharmacy to all your users in their mailbox. And they want to make sure that the user sees it, but they don't want you to see that you're sending them, they're sending your users this message. So they'll find all sorts of things. They'll spell their O's with zeros. They'll, they'll, put, optional, they'll put optional dashes in there. They'll spell things out with numbers, at signs. They'll construct a V out of uh, down slash and up slash. There's a lot of different ways that they can obscure this. So there's a, and they could put an arbitrary amount of white space in. So it's not just a simple, you know, are we, are we trying to sneak stuff through with uh, some letter substitutions? It could be anything. So, so this is a regular expression. And again, it's simplified. The real spam assassin, say spam assassin workloads look like line noise. There's so many different ways of obscuring every single payload. But that's a, um, yeah, that's a simplified example of showing the power of regex for this sort of thing. What we want you to do what we, why we want you to use regexes? Well, for a start, you could just go ahead and do... You could sit there all day typing all the strings and trying out all the variations of all the dirty words. And um, you'd, you'd probably have a lot of fun writing that, but you wouldn't catch everything. And then you'd have a giant brittle pile of strings to search through. So this is a lot of work and it's a pain. And there'll always be ways past it. So there's always another way to write something like that. So we don't want you to write a... String matching is easy and fun. You know, there's always someone in second year who's done second year computer science who remembers how to do string matching. So they'll say, yeah, we can just make a big blacklist and do that. Trust us. We've already done that work. Don't, don't, don't do it. The other alternative is that you can say, I've got a bunch of talented coders. Why don't I just have them write out one line of code after another until we've covered all the threats? This means that your users are then the only people that can deploy a new, a new threat uh, is a coder. And every single thing, your, your, uh, your uh, scanning workload is gonna, it's gonna be one thing after another. First look for this threat, then look for this threat, then look for this other threat, then get sleepy and go to bed. You know, and there are in fact DPI systems built around this principle. They, they look for a hundred different, uh, they look for a hundred different uh, types of traffic. They have a hundred functions, which they run one after another. And pretty soon someone will add another hundred protocols to this and it will run at half the speed. So you don't want that. It's not scalable and it's an enormous pain. It requires coders to do everything. So where would this fit into OpenStack? Just to give you a kind of, Hyperscan is a component. It's a regular expression matching library. I always get a little embarrassed when our marketers say, it's a DPI solution, because you build DPI solutions on it, but it doesn't do all the DPI for you. So it's a required component of a DPI solution. You need to have a fast scan, but you need to build something around Hyperscan in order to deliver the data to it to understand what, you know, what, what's important and what's not. 
So open, OpenStack Neutron would be an ideal kind of uh, framework in which to build it in. You'd be talking about people who are building firewalls as a service applications, layer seven IDS, IPS, anything that's looking at packets on the wire all the way up to application traffic. It doesn't have to be packets on the wire. Everything from L4 through to L7. And we're already present in uh, in a number of tier one um, firewall devices, so there's another, there's another good one, ask your vendor. I didn't go through the giant list of people who say, yes, you can talk about us, and no, you can't, to figure out who's, uh, who's, who's kosher for this slide. So, okay, this is, a pretty da this is a bit of a data dump. So, Hyperscan, we're a regex matcher from Intel. We're available as open source software. We're under a perm permissive license, three clause BSD. Do with it what you will. If it breaks, we'll actually we'll support it. So, and it's easily integrated. We have a, we're a straightforward C library. You can just link to us. We don't fork threads. We don't lock things. We don't take over your command line. We're very easy to integrate into your system. We're just like a really, really big version of Sturster in some ways, like another, yet another library. You can just link us and go. We provide a bunch of different modes. I'll talk more. We can either scan blocks individual things, block things as a block, or you can scan streaming. You can scan the streaming or vectoring modes. I'll talk a little about streaming because I'm probably inordinately proud of it. The matches come out in end of match order. And, um, okay, so uh, there's a bit of inside baseball here. For those who use um, regular expression implementations, we're not a backtracking library. We don't go away sometimes for an exponential amount of time at the size of your input. We're also not a DFA, which means that when you try to compile your regexes, we don't go away till the end of the universe blowing out states. So if you've had an experience with other regex packages, you'll probably understand what I'm talking about. If not, then um, you, can, you can learn all these mistakes for yourself, or you can just use Hyperscape. So, okay, so the two key features that I really want to lean on heavily is that we handle multiple regular expressions. And you can tell that I'm an engineer and not a marketer, because I've constructed a slide here which shows a performance trend going down. It's really inspirational, isn't it? What would that mean? The reason this slide is important, though, is that out there in the world of normal regular expression matches, the sort of things that we can, Java, regex, libpcre, you do one regex at a time and that's it. And that's, that's how they're designed, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's what they do. We match multiple regular expressions by design. So we're aiming for a scalable performance. We want to be able to match hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of regexes. And here I'm showing a performance graph where we start with 100. These are straight literal strings, so it's somewhat indicative, but not. And you'll see that as we double the number of as we multiply the literal strings by the number of them by a factor of 10, that's a log scale there, our performance drops by about a half. So what I'm trying to say is we're not, you know, this is a very inspirational slide. What I'm saying is we're not that bad. We're, that is, performance is not dropping. Performance is not dropping anything like the, at the rate we're adding inputs. So I don't really know how to express that in a way where the slide looks like it's going up, maybe, but uh, there it is. So, so that, that's one of the key features. Looking for threats via regular expressions is scalable. The other feature that we're inordinately proud of is streaming. And what streaming means is that when you're doing regular expression scans, the, it, the scanning can work as if all the data was present, even when you're doing a sequence of scans and you've thrown away the old data. So we can, in streaming mode operation, you present us with a series of blocks in, in a logical stream, and we'll tell you when the regex is matched. So you don't have to hold on to your old data or hold on to some window and constantly rescan it. We can spot when the regex had, when, when we can spot, so this is an example that's running with the previous one. We can spot the same threat, regardless of whether it's cut into two packets or in case some joker has decided to split things into 300 packets, we can still see it exactly the same way. That was kind of hard to do. If you want to go build a regex library, you can see how, how fun that is for yourselves. So I'll talk a bit about hyperscan performance performance on um, what I'm now told to tell you is uh, Xeon scalable processes. You may, you may be familiar with these under the name of Skylake Server, but the, well, they're now Xeon scalable. So, so the, the first slide that I'm going to go with is a bunch of micro benchmarks. One of my engineers wrote a really nice blog post about it. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, <laughs> wrong button. Uh, on uh, 01.org. And this is an, is an explanation and analysis of what, what it is we're doing and why it seems reasonable. So if you want to look at that in more detail to understand the methodology, you know, this is a benchmark you can take, you can download all the, all the bits needed for it and you can run it on your own machine, play around with it. So there's nothing up our sleeves here. So we, we have, we benchmarked it on a Xeon Gold and we've tried, this, this benchmark shows, shows 3,000 literals, 847 snort PCREs and 2,500 uh, 
synthetic regular expressions. And we've showed the matching, uh, you know, we can range between the sort of one to three gigabits on a single core, or if you have nothing better to do, you could fill the entire processor with regex matching and, uh, you know, spin up 22 cores worth of regex matching and 44 threads. I should not say, these numbers are not meant to be an indication that we can pump this much traffic through a box in a DPI system. You know, I'm not saying that if we did this and we stuck a whole bunch of 10 gig Ethernet cards in, that's how fast it would run. This is just a component benchmark. It's a micro benchmark of the regex component alone. So that's the, but these are sort of broad indicative numbers and you would compare them to if you had a regex uh, implementation on a chip from somebody who was still doing that, um, you could, that, this is the sort of number that you'd compare to those hopeful, and again, it's always a hopeful theory, right? You're always gonna have match, potentially high match rates coming back off the card. Sometimes your users won't present the data to you in the right, you know, in nice big chunks. So there's always a, a degree of variation in performance. However, one of the nice things about Hyperscan is we're not stopping you from taking it away. We've got benchmarking tools. You can go try out these adverse suits. You can all try out all this adverse stuff for yourself and see how it works. Okay, so here's another, this is, you know, I, I, I feel embarrassed to present a bar chart with two numbers on it, but this is the very simplified picture. And this is, this is the, this is Snort. This is Snort running with realistic traffic and a full, a full rule set. So, you know, this may be the first time you've ever seen a benchmark of Snort that looks like that, so enjoy it. Um, you'll see that it's not a very spectacularly high performing uh, system out in the wild when you load it up with all its stuff. So, you know, 90, 90 megabits after the heady, after the delights of the previous slide, 90 megabits seems a little bit, uh, but you know, that's the reality of what Snort looks like. It does a lot of rescanning of its input, you know, and this is a fairly heavy policy. It's getting a lot of matches too. So we'll see that it, before we put hyperscan in it, it runs at 90 megabits after 784 megabits. So we're still, we, we haven't even cleared a gig, so it's still pretty modest territory, but we do deliver a substantial speed up here. And we speed Snort up by integrating into its literal matches, its regex matches. We do a bunch, we actually integrate to three different places into Snort. So that's, um, so we get, we make Snort run fast. And you, that, again, this is, a, this is a benchmark that you can download, you can play around. We have patches against Snort, we have patches, and we're actually officially part of Snort 3, which is Cisco's next gen Snort. So the call to action here is if you're an implementer, if you're building firewall as a service systems, you need to take these. If you're doing something rubbish, if you're building a system out just based around literal matches or sort of you know line by line DPI, you should try you should try replacing it with regexes and use Hyperscan to do that because we're really great and you know better than all the other regex systems across. And uh, if you're a customer, if you're an end user of these systems, obviously you don't get to make this decision, but you should be exploring can I can I use regex? Can I use regex to express things? And if so, is my vendor using using hyper, Hyperscan? So you know that's the sort of ask your doctor me message. And we're available, we have an open source uh, project, 01.org.hyperscan, and you can get to us on GitHub. And our GitHub repository is, that's, that's what we do. We develop in the opening, it's, sorry, we develop in the open. There's no Hyperscan light versus Hyperscan heavy. What we do, we put on GitHub, and every, everyone can use it. So that's the, that's the lightning pitch for Hyperscan. I've left a pitiful minute 45 for questions, so does anyone have any questions? No, it cannot. The question was, can regex be used for encrypted traffic? You would have to decrypt the traffic in order to scan it, scan regexes. What's the other so DPI, DPI for encrypted traffic. Encrypted traffic is a huge pain. You need to, for us, and anyone who's looking into the packets, the question is, what, you know, what, other, what other techniques can we use? You can either use statistical techniques to just sort of try to guess what's in there based on flow, based on SSL certificate, or you can um, you can man in the middle it like certain companies do, which is uh, sketchy. But that, that's but DPI you can't look in the packets if they're encrypted, so it's a. Do you have such techniques in the hyperscan? No, well we're just a component. So com so people who have done this, say the man in the middleing or the endpoint endpoint based endpoint based can do this, but we don't have any specific techniques to help that. We're, we're an algorithms library really, than a complete solution. Any other questions? Yes, the, the question is, because everything's on, the question is, is it, does everything just, 
if I'm rephrasing it correctly, does everything just boil down to HTTP? It does, and regex is more and more useful to tell apart Facebook traffic, video traffic, whatever. It all comes in, you can't identify it by port. But, but regex is a really good way of taking these comparatively less structured things. They're not just labeled conveniently by port number and evil bit now. That you know, you're looking into the context to see what are, what are we scanning. So that's a, yeah, that, that's a good, we're good for that. All right, so I'm out of time. Thank you.